Hello and welcome to this podcast on gamification of workplace learning where we are talking to learning leaders and experts in the domain to get their insights and learn from their experiences. Today we have Matthew Steele and David Critlow from the Gallardi Group which is a franchisee owner of popular restaurant chains Wiener Schnitzel, Hamburger Stand and Tasty Freeze. Matthew is the training manager and David is the director of training at Gallardi both of them have been passionate about using games and gamification in learning for improving employee experience and driving positive outcomes so with that small introduction let me welcome our guests matthew and david very welcome i'm so happy to have you join us today hey, we're very pleased to be here yes fantastic uh Matthew, David, why don't we first start with just getting a brief history of your journey so far, and what are your key focus areas today? Well, um, we started our learning management system back in about 2013. We just focused on a small area of the organization of the the individuals within the restaurants, um, our shift manager level, and since. Um, we have kind of outgrown that particular version of it and have custom built our own LMS and it's, it's self-hosted. And since then, we've brought on every single level of learner within the organization. So this is a brand new team member, first day on the job. We've got plenty of content for them, all the way up to the, the owner of that particular restaurant, the franchisee, uh, the general manager, so and everybody in between. So that's kind of a, a brief history. So we've come a long way in really the eight years we've been in the, the e-learning space. Um, and so really our areas of focus today will consist of strengthening our core content um, through the addition of some additional compliance training, uh, business topics for general managers and franchisees, and the refreshment of our core content um, uh, every couple of years. Right. And you can imagine that before 2013, a lot of our content was just paper, uh, some video based. Um, it was really very antiquated and it was very boring to be able to, to keep a, a learner engaged. So um, in 2013 is where we really turned on the light switch and started to really develop out. Mm, fantastic. It's been a eight year journey, you know, and uh, have you been using gamification for long uh, since you've been passionate about that, let me you know dive straight into the topic. What are your views on gamification in workplace in general, and not just learning? I mean, in general. Well, uh, honestly, gamification to me, the, the way I think about it is, it's like comparing uh, a colored television to the radio. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's basically it's getting the same content, the same information but it's just in a more interesting way. So you could just be sitting staring at the speaker of a radio and just, you know, listening to that and, and receiving the news, or you could be watching a television screen and be receiving the news and be a little bit more entertained at the same time. That's the way I think of gamification. Um, <clears throat> I think it's especially important though, when you're discussing things like compliance topics, because uh, the learner often dreads that particular experience yeah. and is generally not knowledge that they're going to use on an everyday basis. So um, certainly if the content is presented more interesting and engaging, the learners will walk away with more from the training. So um, David, I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, I, I would say, in addition, I would uh, look at that today's individual who's growing up and learning out there likes to be more engaged. If you look at a person who carries, say, um, a smartphone, um, they're always very engaged with their smartphone. They're looking at various information on it. And quite often, if they have children, how often do they hand off their cell phone to their kids and their kids stay very engaged with it? So it's a learner out there that's taking place. And really growing up in our society nowadays, and so it's really invaluable um, to have this 
interactive learning. So we really believe that gamification as a tool is uh, has, a, has a future, a, a very positive future. Okay, so uh, I, I like that comparison, Matt, Matthew, that you made between color television and radio. You know, uh, even though you're consuming same content, it's a very different yes. experience. Right, right. That's a sixty-year uh, uh, thing in the making, right there. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I think the, what David was trying to suggest was probably uh, on the same lines, which is increasing engagement through interactivity, et cetera, that we can bring through gamification. So is the core that you're looking at from gamification around interactivity and engagement that you have been you know, really playing with when you have been implementing gamification? Yeah, I would say that. Yes, well, what we're looking at is that if you take a topic or whatever the learning is that to for the learner to learn, is if we can have it towards engaging for them, the positive results will be the more they'll be more engaged, uh, they'll learn more, and you'll have more return on your investment for their learning, mm -hmm. and for the cost of labor and for the cost of time that you have going through learning, it just helps out if they're learning something instead of just sitting there with a. A video or they're looking at some papers and they're just thumbing through and just learning so it, it truly helps out all right yep fantastic and since you've done uh, gamification for learning you know for a few years uh, what do you think is good gamification versus not so good gamification it's so easy for people to get caught in just the terminology but really, you know, what is good gamification versus not so good gamification? How has your thinking evolved over, you know, over the time on this? Honestly, Amit, I don't really think that there's anything uh, that's bad gamification. Mm -hmm. I think any gamification is good gamification. So um, I, I guess let me give an example, right? So if, if you have a, a module or something that's attempting to... to uh, convey information. Let's just say it's good or bad. I mean, that's completely subjective, but, um, and then next to it, you have a big stack of paper documents saying the same thing. Which one would you still rather do? Would you still rather do the bad one or would you go through and read the paper? And probably most people, I think the, the metric was in the 80th percentile that, or 70th percentile at the very least, that people are, are visual learners. So, um, I would imagine that more often than not, people would pick the gamification, even if it was bad, over reading a big fat manual um, mm -hmm. of the exact same topic. So honestly, to me, I think any gamification is good, no matter how good or bad it is. It's hmm. still a win. Still a win. Yeah. It's still an improvement in my eyes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, you know, maybe an, a related question to that is, uh, within the L&D domain and, you know, what experts and gurus would recommend is when you use points, badges, leaderboards, which is usually the, you know, the things that is visible, uh, you know, very easily in a gamified solution. But if you do it in a manner that it is not uh, being applied to the right things, or if you're just doing that over and over again, maybe your uh, audience would start getting bored with that. Is that something that you would consider as you evolve your strategy on gamification and gamified solutions? You know, um, I think right now uh, the sentiment is that the individuals can't get enough. So meaning um, uh, anything that they can receive in a gamified way is mm -hmm. a win over the alternative. And I say that because the alternative is <clears throat> maybe existing content we have that exists in another way. So it's not an e-learning course. It's, it's maybe a, a paper-based module or it exists um, only in an in-person environment in a classroom setting and where it's being, it, it's more of a lecture instead of um, even a document. So I think right now we haven't hit that where people are, the gamification is oversaturated if, if that was more of the question. But um, so right now we, we haven't experienced that. Mm. Right. Agreed. Agreed. Very interesting. Very interesting. I mean, in my mind, I, I think about, you know, how a new uh, technology or a new uh, interface <clears throat> might excite you. And that excitement may continue for some time. So maybe right. think about Netflix 
if we've all been kind of you know uh, been very happy with the kind of engagement that we get through netflix there may be a time sooner or later where we may start thinking about a newer kind of an experience but sure. netflix by then would have been you know with us for a few years at least so maybe you are still in those at least in the context of time that we are discussing early stages where it's still working very well and any gamification is better than no gamification exactly exactly fantastic Correct. fantastic i think this is something which is very interesting and a lot of uh, our listeners would be uh, happy to take that uh, feedback because when they get started sometimes there is this hesitation that how many modules can we create with pbls you know with some gamification will our learners start losing interest pretty very soon so that's that's very interesting thank you for yeah. sharing that okay so do you have examples of how you have leveraged gamification at uh, you know galardi group uh, you know how have you leveraged it effectively if i can call it so you have restaurant chains and within that context specifically if you can talk to us about that sure so um <laughs> Yeah, you know, we we have a couple examples. I'll just talk about um <clears throat> one that uh, actually won us a, a Brandon Hall award um for this partic- particular program. Um <clears throat> we we needed to improve our drive-through metrics. Mm-hmm. We we needed to uh get more efficient, we needed to get more accurate and we needed to um <clears throat> be more friendly on the drive-through. Mm-hmm. And the drive-through is where um at least 60% of our businesses is typically going through during the pandemic it's 100% pretty much so um we decided to gamify that content and it's like a I believe it's like a 45 minute gamification module essentially of like a crash course and drive through mm-hmm. we called it drive through pro um cuz you need to be a professional to work the drive through it's it's really the highlight of the restaurant so um we just looked at the metrics we saw the need we saw the the business case of needing to make a change we chose gamification as a way to do that change and once we implemented it um the results as i said it had won us that award and so we were very pleased with it so that's that's kind of how we leveraged gamification in in one particular area to make a positive impact um on business metrics Mm-hmm. Exactly and I, and I would add on to that that the response from the learners has been extremely positive because it is engaging. Yeah. It's yeah. not sitting there and looking at a PowerPoint slideshow or a basic video. It's not like reading a manual or reading information. <laughs> It is an engaging learning. And so exactly. we found that uh, exactly. It's uh, it's very positively received and so we're very very pleased. Yeah, it's not the learner being talked to by video or or have to uh, you know read uh, you know in a manual or something it's something they have to click through and make decisions so um it's it's more active and less passive. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I I think that would be you know the core of an engaging learning product uh not being passive uh, very active uh, mm-hmm. you have to think make decisions uh, and do things rather than just absorb what is being shown on screen. that's excellent congratulations on the brandon hall award i'm sure you are you. very proud of that you should be uh, yes. when, when was this program released to your people if i may just know this was released um in the tail end of 2018 ah okay 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 so much much before the pandemic hit it us but uh, it would have delivered a lot of returns during the pandemic right. correct right absolutely so yes we had some great forward thinking on that where um we were certainly glad that we had that program implemented and in place um before anything happened oh fantastic right. uh, any other metric that you may have been able to track on this uh, if 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 you have to share on this program this particular program um we we don't track any other metrics uh for that particular program um because basically uh we're just trying to impact the guest experience on that and so really um the guest perception is is reality whether it is or it isn't um it, it is so it's certainly reality for the guest and so that was our target to impact uh, our target wasn't to impact um sales in any way or or any other financial metric it was more so to impact the guest experience so that was our core for 
focus, and we didn't track anything else. Okay. Yeah, exactly. We do have a, a guest service organization that keeps track of it, no different than anyone does for getting guest surveys. And the surveys responded back extremely positive and increased in percentage for overall guest satisfaction. Oh, fantastic. So it, it, it was a big jump. It was a big jump for the team members inside because um, for the learners, and it was a big jump for the guest service side. So it was a it was a double win on that part. Um, greater satisfaction, if I can say that, on the guest service side. Fantastic. I think I think that's as important a business metric that you would go after. You know. Yes. 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 If, if you can show a jump with a program like that. On, on your guest perception scores or surveys. I think that's a, that's a brilliant example. Hmm. All right. Uh, so in, in your experience, you know, as you have tried to implement gamified learning solutions, any challenges that have stood out that, you know, you may want to bring up and how did you address them? You know, it could be technology, it could be cost, could be anything, anything, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I think um, cost is always a challenge, no matter what. So <clears throat> it's certainly trying to find the value. <clears throat> and I think, and we've we've talked with many, many, many different companies, and um, some of them had some impressive things, but even then, the value wasn't there. So there certainly has to be value any time that you're looking to to go in into that, whether it's gamification or just have e learning that's created and developed. Um, however, uh, really, our only challenges were on the technological side. Of um, you know, we we had a uh, several gamified um, modules that uh, had been developed over time, and so it was to make sure that um, they could be run by the end user. Whether that was on a computer in the restaurants, that certainly uh, was purchased. Um, back in time or on cell phones <laughs> so and as you can experience or you understand there's you know whether you have an iphone or an android uh, they they run differently on each different device and um it's just a little bit different so um that that was really more of our challenge is is trying to make sure that the technology was going to work because uh, if you run into a technological issue um, while you're trying to go through learning um that can really set somebody over the edge. Um, so that was those really are other challenges. We didn't have any challenges with with adoption or yeah. or people being interested yeah. or anything like that. Exactly. Uh, David, David had a big 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 smile when you mentioned the, you know the systems at the uh, restaurants were were really old. So yes, anything that comes yes. to your mind, David. It, it's interesting how the quite often in, in development of, of things you think that it's going to be great, and then you come up with a challenge, and maybe that someone still has something outdated. Maybe it's um, uh, one of the old flip phones that you would see out of the uh, early two thousands, late nineteen hundreds. Um, you know, would be there. It was um, just something that just we had a couple, couple. Um, um, hiccups in it we thought maybe we were developing and everyone could use it and we really got past that very quickly so we just really learned mm -hmm. at the very beginning what we needed to do to make sure that everything was going to work for the end user and that was our as matt said our big challenge because if the end user is not able to use it and they're not happy with it then they're going to complain about it and they're going to share that with others and then you have others yeah. that say well, i'm not going to use it and we want them to feel like that the information they're getting and the tools that they're getting to learn is something that they enjoy using and they want to use it so when a new program comes out they want to use it because they've had such good luck with it and they find it engaging mm. absolutely so technology is is one challenge that you have faced and uh, uh, right. was it easier because you were not wanting to track too many variables uh, and would it be it would it have been a little more difficult if you were to try and track too many things that the learners were doing on those programs. I mean, um, the system. I, 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 su I suppose uh, it was. I mean, it was easier in a way because we went to almost the worst machine, and if it could run on the worst machine, it could run on the best machine. So, um, <laughs> and with the worst internet connection, you know, if someone's still doing dial-up. That's a different story, but. Um, so I, I guess in a way it was easier, although, um, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly having to uh, do trial and error is really what it took to, to be able to, to solve some of those things. Yeah. Uh, 
So yeah, it's just, it was a different kind of challenge, but yes. Okay. Have you had an opportunity or a need to revise the program? You know, the, the one that you mentioned, which is for the drive-through uh, pros, because typically organizations feel the need of, based on feedback, you know, they would revise the, uh, the play of a program, especially for gamified solutions, tweak it in a year or two. So have you had the need yet for that? Not that one, no. That one, no. Um, y- yeah, so... Go ahead, David. Yeah, within guest service, guest service is pretty much of a constant. Okay. And that you're offering the hospitality and you have certain steps that every brand or every organization has for guest service. So that part hasn't changed. If you asked us if it was a program about something on the build of a product or something like that, or some law that had changed or compliance, then yes, we would need to go back and update that. And we are certainly not afraid to update and to change things and to keep them current because it's so important for us uh, to keep the information current and fresh for the learners to keep them wanting to continue to learn and when again um, engaged in what's happening, not saying, oh, this is old or we used to do it this way mm-hmm. two years ago or five years ago. So we are very willing to do the change and, and really have already dedicated that that side of, of our commitment that we would keep it up to date and fresh. Okay. So fortunately for Drive Through Pro, we haven't had to do that because that side hasn't really changed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, of course, you know, content is one bit of it. Uh, One of the reasons why I was asking that was, you know, what happens with gamified solutions? And this is our experience talking to a few of our other customers is, you know, they start discovering more things as they (laughs) learn feedback. (coughs) Excuse me. And they want to include that into the program by tweaking it, you know, so that the play or or the flow can be even better as as people take it. So I, I was also looking at it from that perspective, but fantastic. I mean, if you've not had the yep. need so far, I think you've yeah. created a great product, which is serving you well still, both on content right. and mechanics perspective. Right. And, and if that did come up and if that did happen, we are very willing to make that change and get it changed right. uh, as soon as possible. So there would be no question in our minds that we would just say, yes, we have to do it. We want to do it and it's going to get done. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's where we would lean on that side. Great, great. So uh, we we talked about a little bit of a tech challenge. Uh, uh, cost is always a challenge. Any other thing that you can think of? Anything else that you think you know could be a challenge? Maybe you didn't face it. Luckily, uh, the only the only thing from an end user perspective, sorry, David, that I can think of would be um, time. So. Um, <clears throat> Certainly, gamification modules <laughs> tend to be a little bit longer than their um, counterparts. Uh, just maybe a, a basic slide-based module or or even a video. Um, so it would just be the 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 time to be able to devote that type of resource. Um, and so uh, that can be a premium, um, especially uh, if your particular restaurant or something is experiencing some labor challenges. Yeah. Um, you may not have that time or that time. You may just have to find that time in a different way. So that's really the only other challenge. But again, that's that's on a case-by-case basis. Exactly. And, and I would add on that in the event that the prospective individual is overwhelmed by the thought of gamification, is just pick out a topic, whatever it is that you're looking for, positive results or a change with what's taking place, and look at it and just take it a step at a time and just slowly just go into the process and um, get into the gamification. And it's just a slow step-by-step process, and it gets done, and, and that will certainly help out. So that way they'll feel less challenged, mm-hmm. um, you know, on that side of it. Mm. Right. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, uh, time is certainly something that uh, it is not – evident uh, initially to everyone. So if you have that expectation uh, set clearly, it, it may not remain that big a challenge, but yes, it is certainly a slightly mm-hmm. time-consuming activity compared to other type of learning programs. Right. Oh, fantastic. Uh, what advice, uh, David and Matthew, would you have for other l colleagues who may want to start with gamification? They may not have done anything, but of course, people are sitting on the sidelines, we know, 
who want to do gamification sometimes they're afraid they you know lack of resources skills whatever what would be your advice to them uh personally my my advice would be to start with a small amount of existing content i think <clears throat> instead of trying to recreate the wheel it's always better to start with something you already have a foundation built for so um don't try to uh, have the if you're just starting out don't try to have the gamification um uh, fill a void uh have it have it fill a, a hole that was already filled to mm-hmm. see if you can impact something uh, in a better way and i think that if if it's a struggle as far as getting stakeholders involved and and um that could be the catalyst that could uh, convince and change some minds on on that particular aspect so really that's that's my recommendation is just to start with a small um amount of content that already exists and and improve it yeah. and then show that you can improve it and and that's that's really how you begin exactly <laughs> uh, agreed and and i would tie in on that is that if you have an end result that you're trying to change and want some new results is take a topic like Matt's said that is existing and go into gamification with it with it that topic or subject and get it built to where you have the opportunity to use gamification with the people that are learners. Uh, so they're more engaged and they can learn quicker and be able to um, be active in their learning, um, which is all lot better than just um, um, doing otherwise. So I would say um, um, just pick a topic like Matt said, and, and you'll find that, uh, that you'll get some better results for the learning uh, because they're very engaged and active. It really pays off. Excellent. So starting small and picking up something that in a way already exists uh, mm-hmm. is, is one of the reasons also, I think maybe David, you touched better results is what going to possibly show you how much improvement has happened compared to what it was earlier and hence builds a case for future gamification initiatives. Exactly. Exactly. Fantastic. You hit the nail on the head. That's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's exactly what I think they need to prove that this is going to work and show it with something that existed. Whatever results you were getting, if we can get better than that with gamification, you've kind of you know proven your business case. Yes, and I think for us, the learning was through Drive Through Pro because we had the need to improve Drive Through Service for guest yeah. service. And by changing the way that the information was disseminated to the learner and get into gamification, we found that the learners picked it up quicker and were willing to participate and be very active. Therefore, it paid off for us to go into the gamification. And of course, we already had drive-through content beforehand. Yeah. Yes. So it was easy for us to have like a pre and post comparison. So, Correct. So yeah, it did pay off, and and right now Matt is working on another project um, with gamification. So absolutely, uh, it's just uh, going in another segue with it. So we're we're we've done it before, we're doing it again, and we're very much of believers of gamification. Yeah, yeah, I I can sense that in the previous conversations that we have had, and we've been very happy to have those conversations. Uh, wonderful, I think uh, it's been a great conversation so far, also today. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Before we close, Matthew and David, uh, where can our listeners find you? You know, if they have to get in touch with you, seek some advice, or just you know brainstorm ideas, is LinkedIn a good place for both of you? That's fine uh, for me. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Yeah, we're both at LinkedIn, so yes, you're more than welcome to. We'd be happy to respond and and being get into a dialogue. Fantastic, fantastic. No, I'm sure I'm. Some of our learners would definitely want, listeners would definitely want to get in touch and learn from yep. their experiences. Yep, and we believe truly uh, knowledge is power and the more knowledge that you have is the more powerful that your learning will be. So we're always willing to share and learn from others as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Matthew, David, thank you so much for your participation today. I'm really pleased that you could join us today. Thank you once yep. again. Our pleasure. Our we pleasure. enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you.